Hey guys, so um, today I'm going to be explaining um, fields as they relate to quantum mechanics, okay? <clears throat> so, uh, let's get started. Oh, by the way, this is the Circuit Hadron video podcast. Okay, so normally we're taught that a field, this um, red rectangle here, this is going to represent our field, is uh, completely continuous. So, as in, there's no breaks, it's one continuous field. Um, X big, or it can be completely, you know, um, it can go on forever, essentially. So, that's what we're taught, and in normal everyday applications, um, in almost every application there is, this definition works perfectly, okay? They're, you know, like, if you go, if, if this was a magnetic field, the field would be continuous. It may lose strength as it gets to the edges, but it's completely continuous, as in there's nowhere... Uh, like this, where you could, ugh. like, there's nowhere that um, if you put something in the field, that it wouldn't be affected by the magnetic field. So, for instance, say this. So, if this field wasn't continuous, this would be a hole in the field, right? You could put somewhere, anywhere in the red, and it would be affected by the field, but not that. Okay, that's not how fields work. Fields are continuous. Okay thing is that once you get down to the particle level, it starts to not be that way, okay? So for instance, let me describe it like this. This uh, square, which represents the field, appears to be continuous when you look at it, but in reality it's made of a bunch of tiny pixels. That is true for fields all as well. In fact, what seems like a continuous field of, say, magnetism is actually a bunch of tiny little photons all arranged, packed so close together that unless you're a particle physicist, it doesn't matter, okay? Or a quantum mechanist or a theoretical physicist. But I'm saying that these these particles, are these, uh, in our case, since this is a magnetic field, photons are packed so closely together, in fact, even closer than these pixels, closer than anything you could see with even an electron microscope. But, um, yeah, and they're all packed really close together, and that's the field. So, in fact, what looks like a continuous field is actually a bunch of point-like objects, okay? The particles that make up these fields in quantum mechanics and particle physics are known as bosons, okay? So, that's a field as it relates to quantum mechanics, is that instead of being one continuous field, it's actually made of a bunch of little point-like objects. And how objects and how other particles interact with that field is how we measure as the little particles transmitting the force. Um, so to give an example here, um, I've already shown in the Higgs boson video, that's a great example of a field, even though the Higgs boson hasn't been yet discovered. So... Um, it's very it's very hard to draw these things in any reasonable amount of time, so I won't do it live on this recording. But if you imagine that there were a bunch of little particles all through here, say they were um, pions, and then we had a nucleus running here. If you don't know, pions are composite bosons that transmit the strong nuclear force between protons and neutrons in the nucleus of atoms. So a field of the strong force surrounded by this nucleus could be represented by this big circle here, okay, colored red. Now, as we know, as quantum mechanics tells us, this field is in fact not continuous. Take that away. We should make the field with black edges too, just and center it more. That it teaches that this field right here is not continuous. That in fact this field is made of a bunch of little tiny particles. In this case, we'll just assume they're the pixels that make up this um, white circle here, just for demonstration purposes. I'm sure if you want, you can get out your magnifying glass and take as much of a look at those pixels as you want. Feel free. So, anyways, if we have the uh, nucleus of an atom in here, they would be pretty, the um, protons and neutrons would be pretty big compared to the um, virtual pions that transmit the fields, but I'll talk about virtual particles um, in one sec. Anyway, so what appears as a continuous field is actually the little pixels, and how these particles interact, which in this case they would interact pretty strongly because the nucleus is held together to form, you know, if that, that would be your nucleus there. Anyway, they act, interact pretty strongly, and it all holds them together, okay? But it's transmitted by a bunch of little 
So if you can't see with that example, what I'm trying to get at is that a field is not continuous and it, how particles interact with the field is um, how strongly they interact with the force. And if they don't interact at all, then they don't, the force doesn't affect it at all. Okay, so as I mentioned earlier, these, these uh, particles that make up these fields, they can stretch for less than a square centimeter or for a million miles or even infinitely. Yes, infinite, meaning the field never ends, okay? So infinite virtual particles. Now, you're saying, what, are virtual particles not real? They're just as real as regular particles, except for the fact that virtual particles are undetectable. Meaning that if I have a particle detector, right, and say, you know, they're like, say, the uh, Atlas detector, right, at the Large Hadron Collider, it is surrounded by magnets, okay? So you're saying, okay, since it's magnets, is magnetism, the electromagnetic force, shouldn't Atlas be sensing countless photons all through it, uh, these um, virtual photons that make up this magnetic field? No, because virtual particles are indetectable. You can't detect them. You can interact with them by interacting with the field. So, you know, how the, part, how the things inside Atlas interact with the magnetic field but you can't actually sense them directly. Also, virtual particles have mass. So if you have a particle, say, like the gluon, which holds quarks together, if we draw an example here, if we have uh, three quarks to form a biron, gluons normally massless, and massless particles, you know, must travel always at the speed of light, or C, okay? So, the virtual gluons would have mass, meaning that they can't transmit forces at the speed of light. And also, if you know something can go at the speed of light, it can go infinitely, right? Never stop. It'll just keep going at the speed of light, always. If something has mass, it can't travel at the speed of light, which is the maximum possible speed of something. Thus, it has range, meaning that there's a range where it doesn't work. So, you know, quarks can only hadronize, as in form into one big hadron, when they're very close very close together. Oops. Okay, so if this is our hadron here, right, the little virtual gluons that are between the quarks um, have a range. So that means that they don't actually transmit the strong force, in this case, at the speed of light. Hey, it looks like a bowling ball. Anyway, they don't actually transmit the strong force at the speed of light. They transmit it at a slower speed and also at a range, so these quarks can't be that far away from each other. Otherwise, the um, gluons couldn't actually transmit that far because they have a range, like I said. So, I know that might sound a little bit complicated, but if you can get anything out of this, please get that in particle physics, never assume that a field is a complete field, that it's actually made of a bunch of little particles, and those particles are always bosons, never from ions. Remember that, always bosons, okay? They could be photons, gluons, uh, composite bosons, such as the pion or the kaon, um, pretty sure the kaon, I know the pion, but maybe the kaon, um, uh, hypothetical particles like the graviton, the Higgs boson, other bosons which have mass like the W and the Z, so yeah, if that's all, if the one thing you can get out of it, the fields aren't continuous, they have a bunch of little particles that make them up, like, just like this square, it seems continuous, but it has a bunch of little pixels that make it up, Pretend that square is the field, and the little pixels that make it up are the particles, and you're good. Except there's far more particles than pixels in here. So if you had a fo uh, field as big as this white square here, the number of pixels in it, there would be far greater particles. I'm talking like orders of magnitude, like very large amount of particles here. So, yep, that is fields as, and um, bosons as they relate to quantum mechanics and particle physics. Thank you for watching. Comment, rate, subscribe. This is the Circuit Hedron Video Podcast. Bye.